Hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. I hope you enjoy the video. In this video, we are going to talk about something called load patterns uh, for live load, which is basically the discussion of where to place live loads on the beam in order to create maximum effects. And before I start, there is an amazing website I want to um, uh, share with you, which is this one. Uh, Basically, it's called uh, BG Structural Engineering, which is called a Beginner's Guide to ASCE 705. This is a cool guide that helps you understand the ASCE 705, which is the ASCE 7, 2005, or anything, basically. It talks about live loads and how to pattern your live load. And why do you need to pattern your live load? Because it's not always the case that having the live load on all spans creates the maximum uh, design loads. That's not always the case. Sometimes you would have to alternate loads. Sometimes you would have to partially apply loads. Of course, you would think, hey, wait a minute. I cannot partially apply dead load. I cannot partially apply maybe the uh, covering material. And you are right. You cannot apply partially dead loads. I'm not talking about dead loads today. I'm talking about live loads. And this is possibly to be partially applied because live loads are live and they can move. So this is a very important document I want you to, to take a look on before you embark with me on this video. It basically explains to you how to place your live load in order to create the maximum shear at a point or the maximum moment at a point. Now of course I can see you dear engineers from the BS8110 background because the Butch standard has a different version of talking about. Allow me to give you a very quick uh, overview of how some codes deal with this and then show you how you really should deal with it to induce the maximum effect. So, of course, today we have Autodesk Robot at our disposal and to understand this video, we need you to understand how to draw influence lines in robot and this is exactly the topic of a video that is going to be linked above. Please take a look on that video before you continue checking out the load pattern video of today. So, what does it mean? to have this influence line. It means that if you place loads on this position, they will have a positive effect on the shear at that point. If you place loads on this position, they would have positive shear force here. If you place loads on those positions, they would reduce the shear force being applied in this point. So you can calculate the maximum positive shear force on a point by applying loads on the positive portions of the influence line. And you can also calculate the maximum negative shear at a point by applying the loads on the portions of the influence line where you have negative influence lines. If you apply the forces on the entire influence line, on the entire beam, then some portions will cancel out each other. The positive effects and the negative effects might cancel each other and you might end up with a lesser shear force at that point. Of course, the same thing applies for moment diagrams, so keep this in mind. I will turn this into a 2D problem because I don't want to go to 3D now. So I have a 2D problem and I want to have a beam that has the following spans, 0, um, 8 meters maybe, 13 meters and 17 meters. In the Z I have 0, hit the apply button, hit close and basically draw my beam. Now I will basically apply me some reactions. I'll fix every, I will pin everything. I'll basically run my analysis, which will cause it to create a dead load case with a dead load. I don't care about the dead load, I care about the live load. Of course, notice the goal of this video is not to talk about the calculation of live loads or dead loads. The goal of this video is to talk about the positioning of the live loads, not even the dead loads. Because dead loads positioning is not something we can control because dead loads are there. By definition, they are permanent, they do not move. So I cannot move them, right? So I have my live load case here. Of course, I'm assuming that you are well familiar with the basics of Autodesk Robot. If you are not, then please check out multiple videos on this channel to get familiar to Autodesk Robot. Anyway, I have my live load here. I'll go to my load. Now, I go to my live load. Now, here in all my beams, I will be applying a one kilonewton per meter load. This is totally inaccurate and totally incorrect, but I'll do it anyway, just because I want to compare numbers. I'm not interested 
in calculating the loads now. So I have my one kilonewton meter. Of course, I run the analysis, and of course, I get my unit diagram. This is boring, nothing amazing here. So far, so good. Now, if you want to design this beam, you will basically have to um, calculate multiple load cases. So let's, let me show you. If you go to load cases and apply you some cases, I have done a video before about this. Please take a look at the description. I think I will link it if I just remember that. Uh, I will do me multiple live loads. I have done this before. So I need seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But you're sure I'm just trying to uh, calculate by my head. So this is on everything. I have done this before, so I will be very quickly. Let's apply two loads here. And here, let's apply those two loads. I'm very fast now because I've explained this before, I remember. Two loads here, and then one load here, one load here, and one load here. So far, so good. If you run the analysis now, then you will have different moments at different positions. Let's take, let's for example, let's for example say you are interested in the moment above that support. Let's say we are interested on this moment. So, strangely, if you select the case where you applied live, lo live loads in the entire beam, it's 5.93. If you select another case, it's less, obviously. This is 6.11. So it seems that this case where the entire beam is not loaded has more live load moments than the case where the entire beam is loaded. So what gives? Why is that the case? Now, of course, you have multiple cases, and it seems that the highest case is, um, was here, when you had this case. Now, of course, the bridge standard people know that. They know that the bridge standard says that if you want to have the maximum moment on any given, uh, spa, on any given support, all you have to do is to load its both uh, neighbors. Is there a scientific way of proving this? And the answer is yes. Influence lines do tell you that uh, why this is the case. Allow me to explain this. So, what I will be doing now is to show you how this 6.11 is not just a coincidence or just something to memorize. It actually makes sense to have this load configuration. And maybe, just maybe, I can use the influence line to find an even better load configuration. So let's dive deep into this to talk about load patterns and how to find them to cause maximum moment on this point, as an example. Of course, if I talk about moment, the same thing applies for shear, but of course you need here to switch everything, every single moment should control R it and replace every word moment with a word shear in, uh, in, in, in return. So let's take a look on that. If you do an influence line, and I've talked about influence lines before, so take a, take a look on that video that's linked above. If you want to make an influence line, you'll have to go to load, special loads, and create a moving load. <coughs> Now, I have already created a load from the previous video, and we are going to make this load move on the beam. So we need to define its route. I'm going to define a line route, which moves from the left to the right. And with that being defined, I am going to cause this, call this like moving load. And I just hit the apply button at steps of 0.5 maybe. I hit the apply button, say close, and run the analysis. This is something I've done before, so that's why I'm really fast now. I'm not gonna, if you want to have more information about influence lines, take a look at that video I've just linked above. So, we want to talk about the moment of, uh, above this support. This is my target moment. So, let's make the influence line of this target moment, right? So, if you go to <coughs> results, advanced, and select influence line, now we want to find this point. This point is the end of bar number one, or the start of bar number two. I'm going to consider that the end of bar number one. So element one, position one. One means 100%. If you apply and say MY, you see the influence line of the moment about that point. Now let's take a look on that. I think I messed up my moving load. I will not video edit this, but let me catch my error here. So let me see my load. Okay, let's take a look where it's... Oh, look at the green. Oh, I see, I see. It didn't move to the third span. Okay, fine. So let's take a look. Yes, it didn't move to the third span. While I was video editing, I realized I can actually fix it I'm trying something here very strange. I wanted to delete the entire load case, but I thought that, hey, I found something. So what I did is, I went to geometric object 4, which defines the length of the force, and I want to change its contour definition and fix this. Instead of 13, I want this to be this point. Can I do that? 
let's delete this 13 and select this point and then apply. Yes, I think it will work. So let's run the analysis now. So let's take a look on the cases. Yes, it does. Perfect. Let's take a look now. Let's see. So you see the influence line says the following. For any load on the third span, this is the third span by the way, it seems, for any load on the third span, you will have a positive effect on the moment at your support. So if you have any load, if you have any load moving here, you will create a positive moment at your support. You can see the positive moment here. And for any load moving on those two spans, then you would cause a negative moment on this point. So to maximize the negative moment, all you have to do is to load those two regions. If you load those two regions, you will get the maximum negative moment. And that is the reason why this configuration of loading will cause the maximum negative moment on the point. It is because the influence line says that. That is exactly the reason. And to wrap this up, truth to be said, um, the recommendations of British Standard do help you a lot in detecting the correct load pattern. Instead of you influence lining that entire stuff, you could use the load pattern of the bridge code to understand and get the maximum loads. But is that right? I want to challenge that notion just one last time because I feel somehow like it. So let's take a look on this moment. I want to have the maximum moment at the center point, not here, at the center point. And I want the middle point of point number one, I want the MY, and let's, for all the forces, I cannot apply. Yeah, of course, because I'm not on the moving load. Of course, I cannot. So let's hit the apply button, right? So now I get the influence line of the moment in the center. Now, notice that you do have some positive effect moments here. I think I do. Let me take a look here. Let's go. Let's scroll down here to take a look. So if I scroll down here, you have some very minute, insignificant moments, effect, positive effect, when you are loading the third span. Of course, you have the maximum moment effect when you load its own span. But if you load the middle span, you will get negative moments here because it's negative here. Let me show you what I mean. Let's take a look on the individual loadings. So let's go here. In the center here, when you load the middle span, you get negative moments here. This is exactly what the influence line says. It says that here you have negative values. If you load those negative values, you basically multiply the influence line by the negative values and integrate. This is structures one science now. And what you get is a negative moment. And this is exactly what you see here. Of course, if you load the entire beam, then you don't get the maximum moment in the center because you are loading both positive effects and negative effects. But I have an idea. I think, so let me just show you what I'm thinking about. Right click and object properties. Let's select the NTM, go to MY, and select the center point, which is at four meters, almost. So let's just select here at four meters. So it's 5.03 at four meters, the center point, right? So what does the influence line say? The influence line says that if you load this entire so if you load this entire span, and strangely, this span, you will get the maximum moment here. So let's take a look. I want to compare this span alone versus this plan, span plus this span. I'm predicting a minute increase because the values are really, really small in comparison to those values, which are big. You can see here like 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 1, 1.5. In comparison to those values so let's go to view and remember we are talking about the load here about the moment here so let's go to the live load of everything the live load of everything says 5.03 we expect that this is not going to be the maximum if you go to the live load where only that span is loaded yeah see 5.39 versus 5.48 it's just a minute difference but it's a difference nonetheless due to influence lines, basically. However, however, notice that it's not the center point that is actually controlling the design, because when you have a continuous beam, the moment diagram shifts and turns and flips away 
depending on the position. So, what I want to uh, finish my video here with is to say that using the um, recommendations of the bridge code, or at least loading spans, is going to be uh, enough to, um, to get maximum shear and moment diagram values. Of course, I did hit on moment diagrams, but the shear force diagrams are going to behave the same. So this is the legwork I had to do for my pedestrian bridge. This legwork was important because later I will tell you, take a look on the load pattern video and then just throw in the live load entirely. Uh, I know that in my previous video in my bridge series, I promised I'm going to make an influence line on the bridge, but I thought this, I deemed it unnecessarily complex that would complicate the matters. I could simply explain the influence lines on a simple beam and let you, dear viewer, extrapolate those basics onto the bridge. So, for the next video, it will be, of course, the continuation of my pedestrian bridge because now that this legwork has been done, we can continue our pedestrian bridge in peace. Actually, there is not much more to do there. I will just wrap it up because uh, the legwork has been done here. So stay tuned for the next video for the pedestrian bridge. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed the video and it was beneficial for you. Of course, if you have enjoyed the video, then please like, share, comment, and subscribe, especially subscribing because I want to reach the 1K 1k uh, threshold and it helps increase the reach of my channel. I don't know where this channel will be. I'm at the moment I'm at 800 something subscribers. So I'm just saying this as a time capsule for years to come because this channel is not going anywhere. It will stay for years and years to come. So to my future self, check out what the subscriber count and the reach of this channel would be. Let's throw this time capsule in. Anyway, uh, once again, please subscribe to help increase the reach of the channel. And as per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we'll catch you in the next video.